we are recording. As you know, that this is one of the possibilities that Skype offer us for free. So now I think you can see the uh, PowerPoint, if I am not wrong. Could, could you confirm? Can you see? Yes. Yes, I can see it. Yes. Okay. So this is the third webinar, and we're going to deal with these uh, topics. First, I have been uh, monitoring with Brugella uh, the first courses we started in IT Management 3 and IT Accounting 3, so that we can identify our weak points and maybe some good points. Unfortunately, Rugella uh, cannot be with us because her, her connection is quite weak. Then also, we will share some more tips about Skype. Then we will see how we can know if students are following us in, in, through Moodle or they are, not, they are lost, okay, with days away to get some information. Uh, I will share with you about the exams. It's not that every lecturer will have to prepare his exam in Moodle. We, will, we have a technical committee, but it's good that every lecturer knows more or less how the exam will be, no? because it's good that everyone knows. Then we will see some tips also about the calendar. That is another function of Moodle that is useful for both the lecturer and the student. The student can check their his tasks in the calendar. And then at the end, if any of you already tried something and wants to share any kind of problem, we will we will have this possibility. Okay, so this is a bit our program for this uh, webinar. So I am going to share about the courses done for some of our lecturers. Okay. Just to see some positive aspects and some negative, maybe, no? So this is the, an example of one course where you see that the lecturer uploaded a PowerPoint presentation here, the course outline. Also another one, introduction to ethics, and a, and a third one. No? The good point is that he created a forum. This is a forum. And if you go here, you will see the exchange of opinions between the lecturer and the students. But for instance, there is no any time orientation, no? which means, for instance, if introduction to ethics uh, should be assimilated by the student between the 13th and the 20th of October, for instance, no? I mean, maybe to have between brackets the, the week, because normally every unit corresponds with one one uh, one week, so to put the, the week can be useful. Then also, now we are going to see since maybe um, this is something that may happen, no? that you are giving your lecture and you have some noise. Uh, there's a way of uh, muting. Okay, I will show you also how to do this. Uh, I stop now sharing. Now I share a screen and I will share. So now if I go to participants, maybe you see that I can see all the microphones. Now I, I, I the one who was doing noise is Raymond, no? But not because he's a noisy person, but because maybe of his internet. You see that I am able to mute any participant, as I am the one cre who created the, the link. Now, if I open Raymond, no, no, I cannot open Raymond anyway, but you see that I, I can mute people. Now, the only microphone that is activated is mine. In this way, we do not have noise in the background. No? And now I come back to the, to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Um, so these are maybe some aspects that are missed in this uh, example. We have 
uh, no time indication for the students and no channels of interaction, no? Maybe, yeah, there is this forum about ethical approaches, but there is no any indication. I am a student. How can I communicate with the lecturer? This is something we will see. And even there is no any task no, or any activity for the students to practice. This is another example of one of the courses. No? Uh, and we have here maybe the weak point. We see that they, we have one which we understand is unit one, but maybe it would be better to have the title and the time orientation. We have topic two, but he did not customize to put unit two and whatever the title is and the time frame for that uh, lesson. The same, there is no channel open for the interaction between the student and the lecturer. Um, no video conference also. Uh, so these are some weak points in this example. Here we have another one. It's a different lecturer. In the course outlines, this lecturer uh, wrote the reference for every unit. So unit one, you take chapter one of this book. But maybe, I don't know if the book is available for the student or not. This is something to be seen. Even here, we don't have the time uh, orientation for the student. Good point here in the discussion. This is not a forum, it is a chat. So you see the one app it reference is a forum and the students will be able to answer at any time. While instead the discussion is the tool which is called chat, chat room. And chat room is synchronous. It means that, uh, and in fact, if you go inside, the lecturer is inviting the students to chat with her on this day. But this was put by me. No, here you don't see when this chat session will take place. Here we have another example of another lecturer. And here instead there is the time frame, which is helpful for the student on lecture one. So we know that the, this content should be assimilated by the student in this period of time. He has a PowerPoint. Then he created this link to create a WhatsApp group. He recorded the lecture and the lecture is available through this uh, link. And then he has some questions. Yeah, instead there are some activities. And then he says, please send the answer through the Moodle system or my email. And then he writes his email. As for the email, it's okay, but through the Moodle system, instead, there is no any further explanation. How can I send it through the Moodle system? No, the, it's not very clear. No? So it is important to, to clarify the way I want the students to send their task. Okay. Now we are going to visit another example. This is the course of Spanish of Francisco. Mm -hmm. which you, you will see is quite rich. I try to share with you. Okay. Uh, can you see the, the course of Spanish? If someone can open the microphone and confirm that you can see. Yes, we can yes, see. Can. Okay, thanks a lot. So this is the course of Spanish. Of course, at the opening, he presents some uh, general information in a kind of forum. He says that the quizzes, no? he prepares a quiz at the end of every unit for the students to practice. And he explains no? that these quizzes are part of the ongoing evaluation. And then here he explains if when he opens a forum, how can I participate in a forum? No? He did uh, this explanation. 
No, how to submit a post in a forum activity. So he explains step by step the way students can participate in a forum. And since it is a course of Spanish, no, in Spanish, in Spanish like in English, it is important that the students speak, not just they write. No, so he is explaining how to upload <coughs> an audio. So that <clears throat> this is also a tool that is available. No, if the if uh, especially in our case when students may not have a laptop, okay, you may have a question and they and you may ask their answer in a sound. No, for instance, let us see if we manage here to enter. I want to add a new topic. Okay, imagine that I am the student. I want to write here something. Uh, and instead of uh, messaging the, the lead teacher, I can, you see here, the microphone, record audio. So I click here and I can record my audio directly. I start recording and then I will record. For example, I am a student. My te teacher is asking me any question. I know he does not have a computer. So it will be easier for him to explain uh, the answer by recording. And of course, for languages, this is very important. No? So this is what uh, Francisco is uh, proposing to the students. How, then you, you see that he has this kind of uh, timeline. And then he has so many activities <coughs> for the students to practice about vocabulary comprehension. He has also em embedded videos. He, uh, some of them done by him, no? for instance. This is the, the So this is the video he, he did of the video conference with the students. It is here uploaded, available for the students. And this is another video he embedded, as we, we saw in the first webinar. No? The same here. But just to say, you, you can, I think, appreciate the richness of materials. Um, for instance, if you go to vocabulary, days and months, so you, in a, a, we have the days of the week in Spanish. And then we have someone reading. OK, anyway, he, so you see the possibilities. No? Now I'm not going to stop how to do every, every one of these, but Francisco will explain this on Thursday eh, in the fourth webinar. In this case, just to mention uh, all these possibilities. Okay, now we come back to the to the website. Also, something that Fran Francisco does is at the beginning of every week he sends an email. I, I just copy and paste the email. No? So here in the email informs the student that the online class will be on the 2nd of November through Skype and the link is here. Then they can review the previous lesson and the link is here. To access the course, the link is here. Okay. So um, you see that he opened this channel of interaction with uh, the students. In this sense, for, for instance, imagine uh, Moodle is very useful. Uh, there are channels to communicate. I will show you now how, for instance, I go to the home page. Um, I go now to one of the home page. Down I have the courses. For instance, if I go here, the short courses. These are short courses that were done before by Francisco. I enter this course and I want to know the students, no? if they are entering the system or they are not entering the system. 
You see here, on your left, you have participants. Okay, participants, I go here, and you have the list of the registered students. In this course, we had also some staff. No? And you also have the email. This is why it's so important that students at the beginning, they update, they edit their profile so that they put their right email. Because now imagine I want to send an, a message to all my students or to some of them, for example. Just for example, I want to send, I am a student here. I want to send to Jorge Naranjo, I tick just this one, a message. I can choose all of them, of course. Then I go here and I, I write, send a message. I will write, <coughs> dear Jorge, the lesson, the next the lesson is ready on Moodle. The video conference will be queda queda. I mean, whatever I want to write, I, I do send message. And I now I go to check my email. And in Sha Aiwa, you see here, I receive the message sent through Moodle. Dear Jorge, the lesson is ready on Moodle. Okay. This is a way of communicating with the students through these uh, kind of uh, messages. Also here in this list of participants, I know when every student has the last access. No? You see, this voila <laughs> never entered the course, no, never. Eh? This one, one day ago. This one, 12 days ago. Eh? So, I mean, I know if maybe if any of my student never entered, I may try to contact with him or with her to say what happens, no? That you are not entering. Are you alive? Are you sick? Maybe internet problem. Okay, so from this list of participants, that is, as you see, it is the access is here on the left. Okay, I can have this information. And then also something I can do is to make groups if you have many students or to use this kind of messaging system. You see this uh, icon here. It is called toggle messaging drawer. So imagine I want to create a group. Here in the, I am in the participants. I groups, I go here to groups. Before just to do a test, I created these groups. Spanish A1 group one, Spanish A1 group two. Now let us see, I want to create a group three. I will do with you, create group. Group name will be Spanish A1 group three. Okay. Uh, group this I can choose if I can allow the members of this group to message among themselves. Group messaging, I say yes. Even if I want to share something with the group, it is here. But just I save changes. So now I have created these three groups. Now because I am not a teacher, I cannot do here. But normally, you see here. When you are the teacher, you will have here the list of the groups. And there you can uh, inform. I have updated, upload, uh, updated the course. And then the, the students of that group will see the message. No? So these are other ways of interacting with the, the students. Then concerning uh, Skype, or maybe I, I stop if you have any question now, or I go ahead. I go ahead, but if you have any question, please, uh, and in the chat, I see maybe someone wrote something. Sorry, I couldn't mute my mic. Ah, don't worry. Raymond was in the metro. No, no, it's okay. You, 
you, the noise was very useful so that we, we learned how to how to mute. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mona Fantali. Uh, good afternoon, Father. Good afternoon. good afternoon. Okay, I have problem, Father. I so I uh, wrote it for you that for uh, uploading the files. Uh, uh -huh. Because here, when I when I want to upload my, for example, my uh, uh, lectures for for machine learning, because it uh, the lecture it has many uh, too many uh, MX. So it's very large, so I divided it into three. But when I divide it into three, it will be uh, about three mega, three megabytes. So after in three megabytes, it could not be uploaded. How can I uh, overcome this problem? I mean, this is uh, uh, the learning management system manager, which is Wisdom. Yeah. So she's the one limiting the amount, the 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 size of the Five because I mean, if a, a, every lecturer, inshallah, we are 80 lecturers. So if everyone uploads such big, uh, such big files, probably, yeah. probably the system may have problems. Eh? This is why. Yeah. Yeah, yes, because, yes, because I search in the internet that I from 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 the system I can increase my uh, of my my uploading for the size for the lectures, but it is not it is not uh, for me. Yeah, it is closed. Yeah, because it's the manager. No, so there are two kinds of permissions. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the, the manager with wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can speak to her. Can okay. limit the lecturers. And the lecturers can put limits to the students. Yes, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. okay. I, I go ahead, but uh, if uh, you have any question, you, as you see, we are already experts. You have here raised the hand so that uh, you can stop and we and we we stop for the question. So. Muting Skype noise is what we have done. I have done now, no, because for instance, sometimes, as you saw in the case of Mona or, or Raymond, no, because it's not their fault. It's because maybe their connection is is not so good, so we have this noise, and the the lecturer has the, this possibility. No, I go to participants, and I can mute the others. Okay. Then the other issue is about the videos, no? That um, what what to do with the videos? Uh, maybe you saw the other day that when I recorded the first webinar, and it, you could with the same link enter the webinar and find the video with the same link we had used. Or now, for instance, once I will finish uh, this webinar and I will stop recording, the video will remain here for 30 days. So with the same link, people will have access to this video for 30 days. Now, let us imagine that I want to keep it. So I download the video, I just go again to Skype here to this chat, and I will uh, save the video in my computer, okay? And then I want to put it available for the students. Okay. Uh, Alustaza Mona no, was saying that, uh, because for instance, the, the, the Spanish teacher, Francisco, what did he do? He created a Gmail account for Spanish, no? meet Spanish. He and so associated to that Gmail account, he has the YouTube account and the Drive account. So he uploads the he, up, he uploads the videos on Drive and then he shares the link with the students on Moodle. And in the email he sent. This is one way. The other way is to use YouTube. Eh? I, I will show you an example. No? For instance, now uh, I got I, I go to YouTube 
And in YouTube, myself, for instance, I have two accounts. You see one, Jorge Naranjo, my personal account. And then I open in YouTube an account which is linked to the college, okay? This, you can do the same for your course. Eh? Imagine you are the lecturer of software engineering, okay? So you can create you, your Gmail account, software engineering, CCST, at gmail.com. Once you have created that Gmail account, you can create the YouTube account using that email account. And then here, whenever you wish to publish the, the video of your lesson, you choose the, the institutional one, not the one of the course. In my case, it's this one. Okay. And you see here uh, this uh, plus symbol to create video. Okay, I go here. Subir, males, this is Spanish, subir means upload a video. Upload a video. And then I can select the video. I will do an example, no? So I go to my videos, my video, where are they, my videos? Here, I have one which is uh, not very heavy, this one. Open. And then here, you see, it started uploading the video. And here I can write, no, this is, uh, for instance, let us put a unit one introduction, whatever I want to be. I, I can write a, a description if I wish. Eh? After that, sorry, I go to the following. Here it asks if this video is suitable for children or not. No, in my case, it's not suitable for children. Then, uh, if I want to add uh, subtitles, but now I go following. Okay, I continue. And now here, this is important. I will translate. Here you can choose if you want that the video will be public, any person in the world may watch your video or no, because it is something you just want to do for your students. You do private, okay? You share in a private way, okay? And here you have the link, so you can copy, no? this symbol is to copy. So that you copy the link and then you can send just to your students. So just those persons with this link will be able to watch your video. Okay, your video will not be available for all. Okay. So now I do save and then I will send the video. Or as you know, let us say that I want to put the video available for my students. I go to my course. Uh, semester six, my course is education administration. Now, as you remember, turn editing on, first step. I go down, I scroll down, and this is the video to introduce topic four, for instance. So I want to add the video here, add an activity. The internet now is a bit... Uh... I don't know now why. In the meanwhile, I'm going to change this. This is unit... Unit 3. Administration in US. Okay. Now, I have here, I go to level, this is one way, there are others, no? 
I go to label and then I say um, this is a video to introduce lesson three. Two points and then you see here link. I have the possibility of embedding. And here I have to enter the URL. Here I copy the uh, link of the video. Create link. And once I finish, save and return. And you see here the video, uh, it is here. I mean, probably YouTube forbid my video because it's not my own video. It is a, a video I had there, no? But it, it will be here available for the students. Then, then editing off. OK, and the video will be here. So this is one, one way. No? The other way, as you know, you can upload in Drive. But in that case, it's better you create an account for the course. Otherwise, as Mona was saying, if you use your personal drive, it will be full very quickly. I will show you the, the videos, for instance, the case of uh, Francisco. Francisco. This one I'm going to cancel. I will cancel it. So, and I, I am checking if this is the one of Francisco. No, this is another channel with the same name. Let me see because I have it here. Now, OK, so you see Francisco created this channel uh, for his videos of Spanish language. And so he is sharing the material in Moodle, but any student also may find here class two, class three, class four. Eh? And here we have uh, Francisco in action the videos he has prepared for the students. So this is a, a, a way, and as I said, this you can choose if you want to have this channel public or just for your students. Also in the college, for instance, we have our channel of YouTube. No? I will show you here. This is <coughs> the channel of the college where we have many videos just to say that it's another tool you can use okay as for how to monitor the participation of the students i already mentioned no i repeat that you can go uh, to the participants no to know in my case i don't have participants in this in this uh, it was just a kind of test but for instance if we go to another course. Let us see, for instance, we can check IT management three. We have e-commerce, for instance. We want to see the participants. And you see all the students registered in the course of e-commerce. And you see here, we can check when they uh, joined the course. I mean, when was the last time they entered the platform? We see that one, two, never. Three and four students never entered the platform, while the others quite recently uh, entered. OK, so this is a way of also monitoring how your students are following the course or not.
Then we go to the question of exams. Here, as I said, the, or maybe if there's any question, I'm going to check if you have any question. I go ahead, OK? If, I, if you can raise your hand, as, as you know, or, or, or write on the chat if you have any question. Uh, for the exams, I'm going to my to the course I I have for to, for testing home. Uh, we go down. Semester six. Education administration and strategic planning. I did just. Uh, so here myself, I prepared a test that can be a quiz or can be a final exam, of course. Yeah, I said you will have just 45 minutes to complete this exam since the moment you start. You cannot consult external help, this I put it. And here before I have this information, if you have already opened your email, you will, found, you will have found the link to Google Meet for personal identification. After that, you can start the exam. OK, so I want, I sent an email with a link so that I want to see the face of the student uh, five minutes before the beginning of the exam, or maybe his identity card to check that that person is the one who is going to do the exam. No? And then uh, you can see that this quiz that I have prepared yesterday will not be available until Friday, 17th November at 10 p.m. And will stop being available at 11, OK? So let us see. Um, ah, also, this quiz has been configured so that the students may only attempt it using the SAFE exam browser. I will, what is this SAFE exam browser? This means that uh, the students will not be able to open other websites, for example, to check in Google the right answer or some information. Okay, I have put the, the browser in such a way that once they start the exam, they cannot open other websites. So I will try to explain how to do all some of these things, even if I am not uh, the, an expert, we have a team of experts working in this. <clears throat> so let us see, I want to set an exam. First, as for any new activity, I go to turn editing on, as usual. Then the exam, I want to, be, to have it here at the end. No? I will call this uh, mid-term Exam, for instance. Hi, sorry. Or maybe we do like this. Edit topic. Custom. I want to call it mid term exam. I will explain this exam uh, scores for 30% of the final mark um, bef before starting follow the instructions I send you by email for instance no? save changes and you see we have this midterm exam this exam score for 30 of the final mark before queda queda. Now I'm going to prepare the exam. Add an activity or resource. And then among the many activities or resources, we have quiz. Quiz. Name. Again, I can put mid term exam <coughs> here I can describe the um, uh, maybe I can say before starting the exam identify yourself 
by opening the this link. And then, for instance, I, I want to see the face of the student. Eh? I go to Google Meet, for instance, Google Meet, new meeting, uh, and I want the, the I create the link. I copy the link, and then I embed this link, link here. Yeah, I copy, I paste the link. Okay. And then I say, when the camera opens, show me your ID card. Okay. And I want to display this description of these instructions. Timing. So I want this. I want all the students to do this quiz. I I'm going to enable the timing on the tw on the 22nd of November at 10 in the morning, 10 in the morning. The quiz will close. I enable this closing at, the, at uh, the same day, of course, 23, no, 20 seconds, sorry, after one hour, it will be a quick, or maybe a 11, 8. Time limit, what does it mean, time limit? That, once they start, I want them to finish in 45 minutes. So I enable this and I put time limit 45 minutes. So it means that if they start at 10.10, 10, they should finish at 10.55. The system will close. So here the computer asks me, when time expires, I have different possibilities. Uh, attempts must, must be submitted before time expires or they are not counted. Or there is a grace period when open attempts can be submitted, but no more questions answered. Open attempts are submitted automatically, which means that if I define 45 minutes, it means that after four, my five minutes, if the student did not finish, the system will submit whatever he did in 45 minutes. OK, this is my option. There are many others, but just for these are the basic ones. This is the question of safe browser, I, but this for technicians we leave this question of the. Um, then, OK, I save and return to course. OK, so now I have these indications before starting the exam. Identify yourself by opening this link. When the, the Opera opens, show me your, the camera, I wanted to say. I can correct or leave it like this. But now I did not start. Now I, I did not put any question yet, but just to see how they the student sees if I turn editing off. OK, the exam is here, but no questions yet, because normally in Moodle, first you define this kind of time items, the structure of the exam, let us say like this. But now I have to go to the questions, turn editing on. I go down, I go to the exam again. Edit quiz. Now I just know that this uh, exam will be done on the 22nd of October at 10 in the morning, but I don't have questions. No questions have been added yet. Edit quiz. And now you see here add. 
I start at a new question. If you are very clever with the passing of time, you may create your question bank and then you take from the question bank. But now we are new people, we don't have this question bank. So I do a new question. And you see I have all these possibilities. Multiple choice, true, false, matching, short answer, numerical, essay, etc., etc. No? You have all these different kinds of questions. So let us imagine that we start uh, with uh, true and false. I add this question. Uh, question name, I call it this question one. Then I say, is uh, Bin Laden, no, I, I say Bin Laden is, is alive. Now I want to, I have to ask if it is uh, true or false, no? So you see, here you have the correct answer is false. You can say if it's true or false, so that even the system will correct automatically. In case you want also to feedback uh, the student, feedback for the response true, imagine that the student says that Bin Laden is, is alive, who is true. So you may say in case you want, I am sorry, but Bin Laden died in 2000, I don't have idea, 14. No? So, this, if the student uh, makes the mistake, he will receive the right answer, why he's false, no? I mean, this you can also uh, plan for this, no? And once you have finished, save changes. So now, the question one, the, I, it is one point or, or of, out of ten, but I can even change this. I want to edit this. I want this question to be very important. It is three points. Sorry. Uh, no, this is not the way, right way. I go here. I go to the question. The fault mark is one. 